Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning into the Compositionality in Computer Vision Workshop at CBPR. My name is Ranjit Krishna. I am a Stanford PhD candidate and one of the co-organizers of this workshop. My aim in the next few minutes is to convince you of the power and benefits of compositional representations and provide an overview of what to expect at this workshop. So let's get started. In our workshop, we will discuss compositionality in computer vision. The notion that the representation of the whole should be composed of the representation of its parts. People understand the world as a sum of its parts. And with this intuition in mind, the vision community has been developing compositional representations for decades. Representing objects as a collection of deformable parts has led to deformable parts models and recursive neural networks. Representing human pose uh, as a sum of its joints and orientations has led to the development of poselets and structural regression and structural RNNs. Representation of events as a sequence of actions and grounded object deformations have led to action graph models that ground object changes as edges within a graph representation. Planning as well can be set, uh, can be described as a set of hierarchical goals, allowing the ability to generalize new instructions and have led to the development of numerous hierarchical uh, reinforcement learning algorithms. Even this sentence is composed of a series of semantic words and the NLP community has developed syntactic and semantic dependency parses that draw inspiration from linguistic inquiry. The speakers at our workshop will be presenting numerous applications where compositional modeling has led to breakthroughs in a variety of vision tasks. But before we get there, let me highlight one compositional representation that we have been developing here at Stanford. The representation we've been developing is one that can be used for a variety of vision tasks. For example, let's consider the task of action prediction given a video or grounding phrases into the image or even image retrieval or question answering. If you look at these popular computer vision tasks, they all share a similar underlying structure. Across all of these tasks, models need to reason uh, and ground the objects like the cup, uh, the ball, the bed, the skateboard, etc. They also need to recognize the attributes associated with the objects, the size, the color, texture, materials, the age of people. And finally, models need to reason over the relationships between pairs of objects. Which person is kicking the ball versus which one is guarding the goal? Are you looking for an image with a blanket on top of or next to the bed. Noticing this sort of shared underlying representation, we formalized it um, as a scene graph. The scene graph representation encodes every image as a set of objects grounded as bounding boxes, as well as attributes associated with every single object. And finally, relationships between pairs of objects. This small graph, rep, uh, graph here is just a small portion of the real scene graph that's encoded in the visual genome data set. Scene graphs are a dense, structured, compositional knowledge representation and one that can be used to encode a variety of vision tasks. The scene graph representation draws inspiration not just from computer vision tasks, but also has deep roots in cognitive science. A paper in 1998 by Jeremy Wolf studied how we encode visual memory. And from their experiments with people, they concluded that people aren't representing scenes purely as a collection of objects, but are encoding the relationships between them as well. Similarly, Irving Biederman in 1982 concluded that people noticed violations of expected uh, attributes of an object within 150 milliseconds. For example, when people notice that a person should not be transparent, they become slower at identifying that person. He also concluded that people take longer to classify objects into categories if they violate their relationships. For example, it takes longer for us to identify the fire hydrant because it shouldn't be on top of the mailbox. He suggested that people must be processing attributes and relationships in parallel to object identification. And so therefore, the scene graph representation really involves these three components, the objects, attributes, and relationships, and brings them to the forefront of encoding visual concepts. In 2017, we released the visual genome data set 
with 108,000 scene graphs of millions of objects, attributes, and relationships. We showed that scene graphs provide the scaffold that connects language and vision through a shared compositional representation. And that representation can be used to develop image retrieval systems that can decompose queries into a scene graph, which can then be used to ground and retrieve appropriate images. Recently, we also showed that understanding relationships between objects can also improve object localization. Even though detecting small objects, uh, like the ball in this image, uh, is very difficult for vision detectors, knowing that there is a person kicking the ball provides contextual clues that focus our model's ability to reason about where the ball must be. Similarly, these same techniques can also enable instance localization where the model identifies the person differently depending on whether they are kicking the ball versus guarding the goal. One of the benefits of developing compositional representations is enabling methods that uh, model the long tail distribution of concepts. Most visual concepts are rare. And traditional supervised learning methods often fail at learning them. For example, dogs riding surfboards or elephants drinking milk are pretty rare to come by and hence are very difficult for supervised learning models to learn. But by decomposing concepts into their com uh, corresponding underlying elements, in this case, the objects like the elephant and the dog and their relationships like riding and drinking, we can learn to recognize the individual elements and combine them to represent these rarer concepts. In fact, scene graphs provide a compositional structure that enables zero-shot prediction. By looking at examples of people um, uh, sitting on chairs and fire hydrants on the ground, we can uh, detect when a person is sitting on a fire hydrant, something that the model has never seen before. We can take this idea a step further. We can not only decompose images into scene graphs, but we can further decompose the relationships into their corresponding spatial and categorical components. For example, let's consider the relationship eat or eating. Its categorical features encode that people eat pizza and food and giraffes eat leaves. Similarly, the spatial features encode that the object being eaten is usually smaller in size um, than the thing that's eating it. With this relationship decomposition, we developed a weak supervision framework that automatically labels images with relationships. This method that we introduced in ICCV 2019 starts off with just a few examples around the order of five or 10 relationships. And from that, it goes out and reliably annotates new images with relationships. And we show that unlike other few shot learning methods, namely transfer learning, our method approaches near Oracle performance where Oracle measures training with the entire visual genome scene graphs. The mistakes that our approach makes are also interpretable. We found that mistakes usually occur when the categorical and spatial features were insufficient to explain the variability of a relationship. For example, in part C here, the model predicts that there's a shirt sitting on a chair, when it should be predicted that there's a shirt hanging on a chair. But it has only seen hanging in the context of people hanging on bars, and they usually are below the bar in the training set when they're hanging from it. So it's difficult for the model to recognize when a shirt should be hanging on a chair because a shirt is above the chair it's hanging from. Along the same vein, we can use relationships to develop compositional object representations. Just like work to vec builds word representations on which we can perform arithmetic operations, we developed object representations where you can perform operations defined by relationships. We show that there are clusters of object representations depending on what relationships they can perform and which can be performed on them. And we show that this sort of compositional embedding can enable few shot learning of relationships and scene graphs. This year at CVPR 2020, we're publishing a paper that extends the scene graph representation into the temporal domain as spatio-temporal scene graphs. This representation encodes scene graphs as they change over time as people perform actions.
we're releasing the first large scale database providing action as, decom as compositions of spatiotemporal scene graph labels. The data set contains 10,000 videos with half a million objects grounded in those videos as bounding boxes and 1.7 million relationships. Using this data set, we propose the method for few shot action classification that first uses existing scene graph generation models to generate scene graphs for every frame in the video and then learns the dynamics of how the relationships within the scene graphs change to predict the actions. It's worth looking at explicitly how scene graphs improve over existing action recognition models. Uh, let's use this video as an example. Here, the person initially is lying in a bed and then awakens and finally holds a pillow. The recent baselines that have been proposed rely too heavily on training set priors and incorrectly predicts that a person is watching television after predicting that they're lying in bed. In comparison, our method correctly predicts the action awakening in bed by utilizing the change in relationship between the person and the bed from lying on to sitting on and from contacting to not contacting the pillow. With scene graphs as a representation for visual input, we can now start drawing on ideas from information, social, economic, communication networks. And behind many of these systems in social sciences and physics and economics and statistics, there is an intricate, intricate underlying compositional structure, a network that defines the interactions between the compositional components. Over the last few years, the field of scene graphs has blossomed to incorporate ideas from numerous such fields with techniques ranging from message passing to reinforcement learning to graph convolutions. This is by far not a comprehensive list. Today, the task of scene graphs generation has inspired models that utilize scene graphs to improve a variety of core computer vision tasks, including 3D understanding, explainable AI, understanding intentions, social relationships, and even generating images and programs and answering questions. Overall, I hope I've convinced you of the benefits of one compositional representation that describes the underlying structure of many of our problems. Such representations allow us to disconnect perception from reasoning, enabling simpler modular modules that operate over symbolic representations instead of over pixels. Such decompositions can aid few shot learning and allow us to build interpretable composable models. Finally, uh, we also show that the structure uh, can ask questions and then even enable uh, discovery of new concepts. We've only just scratched the surface of what is and is not possible with compositional representations and models. There are numerous open questions that need to be investigated. When is pure end-to-end -end learning with minimal inductive biases desirable over compositional representations? What is the connection between symbolic and compositional representations? How should we handle the curse of dimensionality that arises from dividing our concepts into their corresponding compositional parts? When is composition detrimental for learning? Are they always domain specific or can we rely on some generalizable uh, compositional structures? And here to discuss a lot of these questions is our amazing lineup of invited speakers. Uh, we have uh, professors from Berkeley, MIT, Stanford, Toronto, and CMU, along with some thought-provoking paper representations here at this workshop today. And before I hand it off, I want to recognize my uh, co-organizers from Stanford and Princeton, and especially recognize Jingwei, who is leading this workshop and has put in a ton of effort into making it possible. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy the workshop.